Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through three adventures that were released for the Nave 2 Game Jam very recently. These are three of my favorites, and I wanted, I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, but just other things have come up. I was going to make a much longer video. It was going to be a grab bag video on a bunch of sword and sorcery modules and resources and things like that. Um, and I got about halfway through that video, and then I was just dissatisfied with the list that I'd come up with. So I, I'll, I'll revisit that at some point soon. But in the meantime, um, this will be a bit of a shorter one. And I'm just going to be really quickly flipping through these three documents. I'm going to be going through Godhead. I'm going to be doing uh, the Astral Tower and Caverns of the Sacred Fire. Again, these all three were released for the Nave Game Jam. And they're all really, really good. They were three of my favorite just because of the vibe and the work that was put in, the, the, the dungeons in, in particular, the, the settings of them. I think they're all great. And the art, the art for at least the first and the third one are just excellent. The second one is, is a lot of, it, art isn't the main focus, but the vibe is, and I like it a lot. So let's talk about Godhead first. Return what has been taken, a dungeon delving one shot for players to get ahead. <laughs> uh, so the idea here is that there's this village uh, with a mountain temple and there's a golden statue in that temple and the head was cut off by a thief and that woke up the statue and then the statue uh, just went nuts and started killing everything and exploding, uh, killing people. Um, just not good. Yeah, real not good. <laughs> and it's a god of corruption and a god of mutation. And so uh, I think the idea here is that things are starting to go awful. And there's sort of like these waves of mutation and something like that. At least that's the sort of the, the how I how I read what's going on here now that the um, the place has been desecrated. So you have um, mutation tables, delve shifts, and encounters. Then you have the setup, rumors, and the village of Rontok, which is where um, the players are going to be based. Then you have this body, the thief. You find the body of the thief, and it's um, very, very mutated and changed and, you know, nasty, right? The art is throughout is quite good. You have a map, and then you have uh, just an overview of the location, Ron Talk, with a great piece of art here. Then you have the dungeon itself, and I love the map for the dungeon. This is the first level, the Temple of Zykum, and you have multiple ways uh, up and down, which is great. Um, now it says the crack is almost large enough for a person to fit, so people could maybe break through, maybe not. I don't know. I would say that probably it would be um, a way to break it. You know, seems like it to me. Um, and then you have just a basic overview of the look of, the, of each of the places, and you can see the layout is, is quite good. Map and description. You have um, information for the DM and then the basic description of it. Now, one thing that would be nice is if some of this stuff was like bolded or italicized, like treasure or the monsters that are there, but overall it's just a description you're gonna be reading. Here's the second level. Much more colorful, <laughs> much more um, interesting visually. There's a lot more going on down here and that's because things are going nuts down here. Um, the residents of the god Zykum and you had the pump room, a laboratory, glowing green steam, the rubberized skeletons. Uh, it's great. And then you have uh, character descriptions at the end, monsters, in particular the godhead and the god body. We've got to try to unite them. Then the monsters, which is the rat family, the bandits, the mutant cultist remains, the crying nun ghost, rubberized skeletons, and the gib gibbering or gibbering goo monk. Um, yeah, this is really cool. I like this a lot. This is by Shannon Stevens. Really, really cool. I highly recommend you guys check this out. I'll put links below to where you can get it. I think it's pay what you want on Drive Through RPG. The next adventure is the Astral Tower. This one, uh, sorry, not on Drive Through RPG. I should have said this is on H.io. I'll put links below where you can get it. Uh, the Astral Tower is much more, I would say, hmm, how to put it, the art in the background is AI generated, I believe, 
Um, the text is kind of put in these, you know, large boxes. Uh, it's just written in, it's not, it's almost has like a punky look. Like, you know, it's like um, a lot of those, I would say like more, it, it, like intentionally designed to look amateurish in a certain way, not amateurish, but like in a notebook, right? Like it looks like bits of ta uh, paper that have been post pasted onto, you know, backgrounds. Things are at an angle. Things look like they're kind of unevenly cut, right? It looks, it, it's made to look that way. And the idea here is that there is this asteroid, you know, rushing through space five million miles from the planet's surface. And this wizard has created a Earth habitation little tower on the asteroid and just i love this idea that you're going through a wizard's tower up in space um so maybe they accidentally get here through a portal maybe they travel here intentionally um maybe there's a, an item here that they're trying to find maybe there's a book this is extensive libraries maybe that's what they're trying to do here so i think it's really cool you can land on the surface and enter in or you can come in through the subterranean entrance. Maybe there's a portal down into the basement and you have to come up into the library regardless. This is just a really cool location-based encounter or location-based dungeon. And it's not really, there's not anything happening here in terms of like story. Like it's not like Godhead where there's a thing you have to do. This is much more like, hey, here's a location with a whole bunch of cool stuff happening. Um, now the, the map is not on the same page as the descriptions, but it's just on the next page, and so you could easily do this on a two-page spread and see it very quickly. There's a lot of treasure here. This is a higher level adventure it's for level fours, four to six. So this is a bit higher level. The descriptions of each room is very, very brief. Very, very brief. Right. Uh, this is the map, of, and I really like the way it's laid out. You just enter in. It's got this kind of cool... Um, I don't know. I just think I really like the layout. It's very wide open. You can kind of go from any room to any room, almost. I mean, there are some locations that are more sealed off like you know 10 is separated from 11 12 and 13 and are only accessed by that hallway uh, 9 and 8 both go to 6 but there's still a lot of looping 1 2 3 6 back to 4 you know i just i just like it here's that second story plus the third story plus the fourth story as you go up and up again you can see the background art um very interesting if it's not AI, I think it's AI generated. If it's not AI generated, it has that kind of distinctive look that's kind of, you know, part of it now. But maybe not. I might be completely wrong about that. Um, you know, it's hard to say these days <laughs> if this sort of sketchy style is AI or not. I have to think if it were not AI generated, I wouldn't cover it up with these maps and the this this uh you know the, the descriptions and stuff i'd want it to be front and center i'd want to be able to see it so i have I, I have a suspicion yeah there it is background images generating using doll e2 and open ai i thought so but the rest of this dungeon i think is really my favorite <laughs> i really really like the layout i like the descriptions i love this setting of an asteroid floating through space it's a really clever idea and the dungeon itself is interesting again it, it's it's not like something crazy is happening here you're looking through, there's a library, um, but it's cool. It's a great location. And even if you didn't want this to be floating through space, you could take this as a cool wizard's tower and put it in your world. I think it should be floating in an asteroid through space. <laughs> That's really, really cool. So anyway, the astral tower. Cool, a really cool adventure. I think it's I think it's cool. Pretty fun. The last one is probably the most, well, it's up there with Godhead. It's very, very detailed, and a lot of work has gone into it in terms of the art and all of that. This is The Caverns of the Sacred Fire by Francisco Lemos. I assume that's how you say Francisco's name. Um, the art is great. The art is really, really good. And the dungeon map is also really good. It's, it, it reminds me of, um, well, a lot of different uh, cartographers now. I don't know if you guys have seen that review I did of the Hinterlands, which is the Bay of Spirits. Uh, it has that kind of isometric, um, yeah, isometric dungeon look. It reminds me of, um, oh gosh, there was that collection of dungeons um, that had a bunch of isometric dungeon maps. I forget what it's called now. Uh, maybe I should do a review of that at some point. I know Questing Beast has done one. But it looks like, yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but it looks like that. It's a really well laid out dungeon. It's really cool. There's a deity of chaos who's, who's exiled to the mortal realm, um, took refuge in an intricate network of tunnels, 
And over time, that became this sort of pilgrimage site, and then monks settled in there, and they don't come up to the surface, and they, um, yeah, it's this weird chaos cult with weird ingredients down at the bottom. And so you're just basically going down this shaft into the earth. Yeah, with fungal folk and the congregation, which is the cult of the, the monks down here who are monks of change and chaos and have mutated over time. It's really cool. As you'll see, the art is really, really good and it's really well laid out. Sections of the dungeon are given at any one time and they're just easily keyed so you know where you're going. There's the fungal place, the aphid farms, the fossilized giant, the entrance to Vine's room. Really, really well laid out. And, and one of the cool things here is that the, the goal is to find rare ingredients. You can choose what they should find, where they are, or you can roll um, at least three, but you can put them around. And, it, and a really nice touch is that um, Francisco has added the difficulty of each of these relative to what it is, right? So um, water blessed by a false god. You can find that in, in room six, a sacred fountain. That's easy. Acid gland from an acid worm. It's in encounters and it's a medium difficulty one. Um, so, you know, there are some easier ones, some medium ones, and then there are some hard ones. Or maybe there's just one hard one, really. And that's the egg of a spider moth. Beware, they can hatch at any moment. And that's in number nine, and that's hard. That's really cool. You can see how, if you, if you, if you want it to be very easy, just do the first three, just do a few of the, the early easy ones. You maybe add in one medium one. But if you add that hard one, it'll be much more difficult to achieve their goal. Here are some nice rumors, too. And then you have a description of the other places, right? So it's really, really well broken down. Now, this is not a pay-what-you-want adventure. I'm, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, it's, it's nine pages in this spread form. So uh, it's really, really cool. I highly recommend you guys check this one out. Again, as you go down, you can see on the map that it gets more worked. There's the actual living quarters of the monks, and they're pretty m mutated and messed up. <laughs> they're pretty mutated and messed up. So anyway, I think you guys should check out The Caverns of the Sacred Fire. This is a fantastic adventure, and I highly recommend you guys check it out too. So there's the Astral Tower, The Caverns of Sacred Fire, and Godhead. All for the native game gem. I'll put links below where you can get them. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. I know it's a shorter one, but just wanted to get something out there. I uh, hope you guys all enjoy it, and I'll see you all in another one.